Good evening, everyone. I'm St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church family. It is good to see everyone tonight on the expectation moment. I'm grateful for those who filled in for me during my absence, but I'm certainly glad to be on here tonight. I thank God for each of you and your prayers and uh, for travel and just all of the, way, the ways you supported me. Today, I got a chance to do a, um, a public service announcement, a commercial about organ donation. I was very excited. And one of the questions they asked me was, what was my biggest support? And I said, I had multiple bigger supports. And so the, the, the lady kept pushing. She said, so who, how, who are your supporters? And I said, I had a whole congregation of people who prayed for me. And the, the little lady started crying. She says, this has never heard of that before from a testimony from a transplant person. I said, well, I pastor a church of people who pray and love the Lord. And I said, it's been a mighty blessing to me, not only during my illness, but also during my wellness. And so I just want to share with you all how much, again, you all mean to me uh, as, as, um, as part of the, my family, the St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church family. I thank God for each of you. And I thank God for the opportunity that God has given me to serve in this capacity. And tonight, I thank God for another chance to come back and teach on the living in expectation. We're going to finish up chapter three today. Uh, chapter three, if you would, in the book of Acts is a book that, uh, is again, as I've said, and I think that, um, I think that, Sister Val has shared and others have shared that we have been in Acts and it's no accident that Sunday school has been in Acts. Um, our last week's sermon was I, 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 I talked about the same concept. And then tonight we are um, again in the book of Acts. The book of Acts chronicles the birth and the growth of the body of Christ, the growth and the birth, birth and the growth of the church. And so everything that we see here in the book of Acts is applicable to us. Every single thing that we see is applicable to us. Everything that we see Peter and John and later Paul and all the disciples do is applicable to us. Why? Because we are too our disciples. We too are followers of Jesus Christ. And so the same way the spirit empowers those men, the spirit empowers us. Um, Peter in his initial sermon on the day of Pentecost said that this is the day when the spirit of God comes upon the sons and daughters. And so all um, all the shackles have been broken that everyone who is who follows God or trusts God, so call, call on the name of the Lord, will be saved and will be empowered to do that which God has given us to do. And so I say that to just remind us that as we see things take place in the book of Acts, as we look at the healing of this man um, um, that was lame from his mother's womb, as we see the response uh, that took place as a result of his um, miraculous healing miracle, I want us to understand that the same things, the same power is available today, and the same things can happen uh, in the body of Christ today as we faithfully allow God to use us. That's what I want us to understand. So we go to chapter Acts chapter three tonight and we pick up around about verse, um, I, I think we'll pull up at verse 20 just for a little context as I haven't taught it in a few days. Um, in the book of Acts chapter three, verse 20, the Bible says, um, as, as, as Peter is uh, telling the um, men of Israel, the, 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 the Jewish people in regards to uh, Jesus, he again reminds them that they uh, denied Jesus. He again remind them that this healing miracle did not come through their power, but came in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, he reminds them that they they did it, and he tells them he considers what they did was not out of malice, but out of ignorance. He tells them um, that what they missed was what they had heard. I like this part in verse um, 18. This is what Peter said. He said, but those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. He's telling them, he said, look here, Y'all go to church all the time and y'all read the scriptures. Y'all got the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Pharisees and the scribes and everybody, the high priest giving y'all the scriptures over and over and over again. Yet, for some reason, he says that you all missed it. You all missed it. God said it out of the prophets, yet you missed it. And the message was that Christ will suffer. He has so fulfilled that, that what happened that it was a, it was prophesied and promised in the Old Testament and what is fulfilled uh, here. Uh, in the time of Jesus Christ. Now, verse 19, he says, here's a response to the knowledge that Jesus is in fact Savior. He said, repent, therefore, that's A, be converted, that's that's conversion. C, he said, it's just, as a result of that, but your sins may be blotted out. Then when the time of refreshing come comes from the presence of the Lord. So he said, here's some benefits that when you repent, you, you can be converted. When you convert it, your sins will be blotted out. When your sins are blotted out, then you experience the refreshing that comes from being in the presence of the Lord. Now, verse 20, he says that here's what, as a result, I, I mean, slow this down. As a result of repentance and conversion, as a result of sin being blotted out, 
and the refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. Here's what Peter says to those men, and here's what Peter says to us that God will do. First of all, in verse 20, he says, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before preached unto you. So that was the gift, uh, the, the uh, first gift that Jesus Christ is. And that's our first gift. As saved people, what is the main thing we have? Jesus Christ as Savior. In verse 2, verse 21, he says, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. He lets us know that Jesus, who God has given us, is now in heaven with the Lord um, and will come back at the time uh, that God decides. The prophets have declared that that would be the case. Verse 22, he pauses and gives an explanation. He says, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. So again, he's reminding these learned men, hey, here's what Moses said. Y'all, he's, it's almost, I can hear him saying, Reverend Evans, y'all know Moses. Now, I know y'all know Moses. Here's what Moses said. Moses said that, that God said he would send a prophet like unto him, meaning in the flesh. Uh, and he says that the, the, the message was that you should hear all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And so in making this point, he is reminding the, the men of Israel the necessity of responding to uh, what God had promised them through Jesus Christ. Therefore, they must respond to what Jesus said. In verse 23, here's another promise. It shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet, that will not hear Jesus, shall be destroyed from among the people. That is a promise. That promise is, 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 is applicable now as well as then. In other words, anybody who has the audacity, the nerve, the, the stubbornness, the stiff-neckedness to reject the prophet, that means Jesus, shall be destroyed from among the people. He's speaking to the Jews, but also today that speaks to anybody who is not willing to receive Jesus. I said this a couple of weeks ago, and I got to say this again. I um, have moved a little bit in my in my um, desire for salvation. It used to be I wanted people to be saved. Now I feel a more of a pressing, or nest, I feel more pressing that people understand. And not, I'm not talking about necessarily church people. Uh, people who come and who are saved. I'm speaking about people who are unsaved. That there are people all around us who are unsaved. And for us to not at least impress upon them, and I'm saying we can't make nobody saved, but what we can do is be impress upon them the, 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 the necessity of responding to Jesus Christ in the affirmative in order that hell will not be their future. He says it again, uh, that, that there shall be destroyed from all the people. Destruction of the people is this connection from God and destruction takes place in hell. So he's saying anybody who doesn't hear or rejects um, um, what the prophet shall say, what Jesus says shall be destroyed from among the people. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That means that anybody who doesn't accept that, because Jesus said it, Anybody who does accept it will be destroyed. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Any man, no man comes to the Father but by me. Anybody who says, I don't know, I try something different. That person has, in fact, rejected um, Jesus and what he said and will be destroyed. And there are many other verses, but I'll just use those two as examples. Verse 24, in, in case somebody said, and this is the thing about prophetic preaching or preaching under the God, the em empowerment of the Holy Spirit. There's always an anticipatory moment when the person who might would have a debate, anybody ever talk to somebody, no matter what you say, they got a response. Anybody know somebody like that? I don't care what you say. Yes, the sky blue. Yeah, but you know, the clouds make it white. There are people like that about Christ. They will argue up and down to defend their position in regards to accepting Christ. And so these, somebody probably out there was standing saying, about to say, well, I don't even know about that. Verse 24 answers that question. He said, yay, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold these days. Peter said, before you even say it, before you stand there and say, well, I don't know, you know, I hear you saying it, but I don't know if that's the case. Peter said, look it up. Every prophet since Samuel has said it, that has declared the coming of a savior, a prophet, this man, Jesus, and have foretold of the days of Jesus's death and resurrection. Everybody said it different. Every one of the prophets said it differently, but ultimately that was the overwhelming message of every prophetic ministry um, of the coming of Jesus. Yes, there were some, there were messages about the destruction of the people of Israel, but ultimately the message always had in it the coming of a savior for, the, for, for Israel and for the entire world. So he says, you can't say you didn't know it because every prophet from, the, from Samuel has made this declaration. Verse 25, he says, now, you are the children of the prophets 
and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Let me stop here. Let me pause for a moment. So here's what Peter's saying. He's talking to the Jews. He says, listen, you are the children of the prophets. You all, those are your forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Samuel, uh, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, Michael, name whom, Rebecca, every prophet, he says, was related to y'all by lineage because they were of Jewish lineage. He said, you're the children of the prophets. And you are children of the covenant which God made with our fathers. They are children. God made a, a, a covenant promise with Abraham. I, I, I'm using the word covenant. Covenant means that God made a pact with Abraham. It really required, all it required was Abraham's obedience. And then God did the rest. He said, you are the children of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and, and, and thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. You remember God told Abraham, listen, through you, I'm going to bless the whole world. Through you. And so he said, y'all know that, don't you? And I can imagine somebody says, well, yeah, you're right about that. In verse 26, it says, until you first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. I'm going to, I'm probably going to stop here, but I want to break this down. If y'all got a few more minutes for me, he's saying to the, to the Jews, unto you first God, in other words, that Jesus was sent to the Jews first, that the prophet, the promise that God made with Abraham, the covenant that God made with Abraham was to the Jews. It was that's who it was to. And as a result, he's saying that the promise was that he and, and now he says, until you first God, having raised up his son, Jesus. Again, he reminds them that Jesus, who had died, had now been raised from the dead by God. All right. Then he says, send him to bless you. This had to have been a shock to them that the Jews who had been so ornery in rejecting Jesus at every turn during his life and basically forsaking Jesus um, when he was brought before the, 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 the pilot, he's saying that Jesus, this Jesus came to be a blessing unto them. Let me see if I can give you an example. If, if we spent all our time being hateful and mean and spiteful to a person only to have somebody tell you, hey, that person was here to help you. Can you imagine how they must have felt? They, they, they had their felt kind of funny, but the, the, I don't think that and I know Peter wasn't trying to put them down. Peter was trying to liberate them so that they would be free to follow Jesus. That's all Peter was trying to do. He was saying that all that you did to Jesus, he had said this twice already, all the, 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 the mishandling and the manhandling and the, and the beating on Jesus and spitting on him and, and him being crucified and him suffering and shedding his precious blood, crown of thorns on his head, nails in his hands, spikes in his feet, piercing his side. He said all of these things that you all put Jesus through because you rejected him. All the things he did during his ministry when they came to challenge him. He said, all these things, you must understand that Jesus was sent to bless you. And I'm unfortunately, sometimes in the world in which we live today, I see a similar thing happening. People may not have been in church their whole lives, but they know that there is a savior. And, and unfortunately, sometimes in the family of those of us who are in Christ, that we are patient enough to allow them to, to ignore Jesus, but we should be a little more pressing that they may understand the necessity of Christ, that Jesus came to be a blessing unto us. How many of us understand that Jesus came to bless us? But not just us, because, I mean, go back to Jesus in John 3, for God so loved the world. He didn't just love St. Peter. He didn't just love Thomas and Edwards and, and other Thomases and Gwinnett. And he, he loved the world. Jesus, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, do what? To die for our sins. And so he came ultimately to bless us. But there are so many out there thinking that their blessings or their breakthroughs or their deliverance or their power, or, or, I'm sorry, or their, or their, um, um, their, 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 their perspective there, their, the, the power they seek, the peace they need all comes from somewhere else, but it comes through Jesus Christ, period. He came to bless us with what? Eternal life. He came to bless us with what? Abundant life. He came to bless us that we could be led and guided by, guided by him, that we could find our salvation in him. This, this is why Jesus came, to, for the wages of sin is death, to give God eternal life. He came away to take away the penalty of sin, uh, the power of sin, and even ultimately the presence of sin. Jesus came to bless us, and it's important for us to share with a dying world. And we use it all the term all the time, but let's just be honest. The world is dying. Anybody who's not in Christ is dying and actually on their way to hell. And so he says that we must share the message that Jesus was sent to bless you. Now, if you don't take him, that's on you. But Jesus was sent to bless you. Last year, when Isaiah and Noah uh, pledged, they, people came and brought all types of gifts. And, and Isaiah and Noah both were given these gift bags. But I, I still don't know who gave those bags. The bags full of little gifts and trinkets and toys and paraphernalia. And, 
and 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 they you know so had so much stuff that they just left it and so finally one day i looked at the bag and i saw all this nice stuff but well, they were going back to school so what did i do i started wearing it so when they came home for christmas they said dad where you got all this stuff i said how do y'all gift bags well that's ours i said no nah, y'all didn't take it y'all didn't take it seriously i was too much focused on other stuff the world is like that today the world is focused on other stuff jesus has come and given the gift of salvation in him god has given us the gift of salvation through jesus christ but too many times people and again i'm talking to the choir but i want us to remember this message to share with others that the world is distracted by what everything money power um political power personal power pocket money whatever we're distracted the world's distracted away from jesus and this is our reminder the lord god god sent jesus to bless you and the benefit of that is is that in turning away every one of you from his iniquities here's the blessing that jesus brought that no longer are we trapped under trapped in trapped by our sin and our sinful nature jesus came to liberate us that we may have a life that is not only worth living but a life that leads to eternity in the presence of the lord that's why jesus came that's why jesus came to bless us that out that we may be able to turn that he turns away everyone from his iniquities i said this before none of us have the ability to change our own lives but in jesus our lives will be changed none of us none of us have the ability to turn away from, from what we've done. But in Jesus, he turns us away, strengthens us to, to turn away. None of us have the ability to save ourselves from sin, but in Jesus, again, our sins are forgiven. None of us have the ability to give ourselves eternal life, but in Jesus, we can have eternal life. And so let us remember these words and let us remember to share these words that Jesus came, God sent Jesus to be a blessing to everyone. But in order to receive that blessing, we must take it seriously and receive Jesus as Savior. I'm gonna stop tonight at 717. Um, I do want to remind everyone that tomorrow morning, Reverend Edwards at 10 or 11, what time we have at Sister Thomas? 11. 11. 11. At 11 o'clock, the women's ministry is having their mother-daughter brunch, and we are encouraging everyone to come. And the men will be banned wearing fancy hats. Fancy hats. And unfortunately, I won't be there. I have a funeral, but I am about to make 20 quiche for tomorrow for the Mara's brunch and so i will have y'all will have plenty of quiche I, i'm gonna I'm share this secret since y'all online i was i'm, I'm making the lobster quiche i'm sorry i'm sorry, making a seafood quiche with lobster so i'm throwing out my lobster right now i'm, I'm sorry about it. i have my lobster right now and mix it in there with a little, with a little greer i don't know how to say it g-r-u-y-e-r cheese and i want i'm trying it out on y'all i believe y'all gonna like it so i'm looking forward to tomorrow everyone having a good time and I'm hope that y'all enjoy the quiche that I'm making because I'm making it out of love because I love yum, each of you. Yum. We receive it. <laughs> y'all receive it. All right, good, good. Well, I thank God for each of you. What's that, Sissy? Definitely receiving it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I thank God for each of you, and I look forward to the great fellowship tomorrow, and I certainly look forward to Sunday. Uh, let us continue to pray for each other. Let us make sure we continue to pray for Reverend, Le Reverend Les and her family. Uh, let us continue just to be encouraged in the Lord and encourage each other. Let us pray. Yes, Father God, in Jesus' name, we just come tonight to lift up our hands and our hearts, Lord, to just say thank you for all of your blessings and all of your grace and all of your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us to be your children. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us your word in this uncertain world. And we pray not, God, tonight as we prepare to just relax and enjoy this evening, Lord, whatever we choose to do, we pray, God, that you just give us uh, peace. Uh, that comes from a relationship with you and joy that comes from a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you bless every household that is represented on this lines, these lines tonight, Zoom and phone. I pray, God, that you bless every individual Christian that is on these lines tonight. And I pray, God, even beyond that, that you bless uh, whole families as a result of the, your word tonight. God, I pray again that you give us the boldness to stand in your word, stand on your word, declare your word to those we love first and then those who you put us in contact with. I pray, God, tonight that you allow your word to get in our hands and feet, that we'll be better equipped to serve you. God, let your word get in our hearts, that we may be strengthened in our inner person. God, let your word get in our ears, that we can hear your word over the winds and the waves of the world. Lord, let your word get on our minds, and in our minds we might have peace that surpasses all understanding, and that the fiery darts of Satan be quenched. God, let your word get on our lips, tongues, vocal cords, 
lungs and throat that we may declare your word to a dying world to each other and to ourselves god give us peace joy grace and mercy again god we pray that you build a hedge protection around us that the fire darts the same will be quenched and finally god i pray that you would let us lord pray without ceasing give us the strength lord to give you thanks in all things knowing this is your will for those of us in christ jesus Give us the ability to rejoice evermore. And finally, Lord, let us not quench your Holy Spirit, but instead let us be led, guided, and empowered by your Holy Spirit to do what you called us to do. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. St. Peter, Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, Pastor. I'll see y'all on tomorrow, on Sunday. recording is off.